If you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you know that over the last couple of years, I've been on a browser journey of sorts. And it has been a journey that really has been back and forth between a whole bunch of other browsers and Firefox. I go to a different browser, I come back to Firefox. I go back to another browser, I always come back to Firefox. And there's a good reason why I always come back to Firefox. I happen to think that it is the best browser out there. I think it's developed by a corporation that, while I have many problems with, at least tends to be a champion of open source software, which I think is good. And it is just the most customizable browser out there in terms of the actual UI. If you have ever used userchrome.css, you'll know what I mean. About two weeks ago, I decided I was going to switch away from Firefox again because I was having some problems with extensions after an update, and it was just kind of a mess. I'm not sure actually what was going on there, but I ended up switching to Microsoft Edge for about 30 minutes or so. It was not a long time with Microsoft Edge, and after deciding that I was not interested in actually using Microsoft Edge, I moved to Brave. Now, about a few months ago, I made a video about Brave Browser. And during that video, my biggest reason for not sticking with it was that I didn't like the crypto stuff that was on top of it. And I had, at that point, forced myself to keep all the crypto stuff on because I wanted the full experience of what Brave was. So at that point, I moved away from Brave because of the crypto stuff. This time, when I decided I was going to try Brave, I decided to shut off all of that crypto stuff because despite what I just said where you're basically just using Chromium, I wanted to at least use an open source browser that wasn't so tight-fisted into the Google ecosystem and Brave is basically your only option out there. I mean, yes, there's Vivaldi, but I wanted an open source browser. There are a few other Firefox alternatives or Firefox-based browsers that are okay, but most of them are kind of messy in terms of actually being good browsers. So I didn't give any of those a chance. So I just decided to try Brave again, but this time pulling out the crypto stuff that I really didn't like. And I've been using it now for two weeks. So I wanted to revisit my time with Brave Browser and make a video about it because I have some thoughts on it and also some news about where I'm going next because obviously I can't just stick with a browser I have to move on to something different that's just it seems to be the nature of this journey so my thoughts after two weeks back on Brave are that it is very boring it is just a very boring browser it does its job very well it's a very very good browser it's fast you can browse the web all you want on it like you're never going to have a problem with Brave Browser being a good web browser. It is a good web browser, but it is boring. And for most people, the vast majority of people, the people who aren't interested in customizing their browser whatsoever, that's all they'll ever need. And they don't care that their browser, which is a tool for them, is boring, right? right? So most people, like I said, just wouldn't care. They, they would be perfectly happy with their browser being boring and it just working. That's a good thing for the vast majority of people. So when I say that it's boring, it's actually a compliment because that's what most people want in a browser. They just want something that works really, really well. And Brave does that. It works really, really well. The problem comes because I'm not one of those people. I don't like boring. I want to have a browser that I can customize a lot. And as I said before, the only browser that you can customize in terms of the UI at least like manually customizing the UI, not being set by a specific number of customizations, is Firefox. Like you can use user chrome.css to do basically anything to make it look really nice. And I love that. When I switched away from Firefox this last time, I said on Twitter in a tweet that the thing that I was going to miss the most was user chrome.css and damn it if I wasn't right. Because I was right. The one thing that I absolutely miss across the board, across every experience of my using a browser is that user chrome.css. Now there are other ones that I'm going to talk about, but that's the big one. Like that's the one thing that is keeping me from really enjoying my time with Brave. Now, now if user chrome.css didn't exist and you just had to use Firefox the way Firefox comes out of the package, I think Brave would probably be basically on even tier, at least for me, in terms of browser, because they both do a good job of being a browser. But because user chrome.css does exist, it always pushes Firefox ahead of Brave in terms of everything because I like that. 
And every time I try Brave or any other browser that doesn't have that kind of customizability, I always miss it. So that is definitely the biggest reason why Brave has just turned out not to be for me. The other one is tab groups. Now let me show you what I mean by tab groups. So I've made a video on tab groups, but basically what it is, is something like this. So you have these groups up here that allow you to basically group tabs together in categories. And both Firefox and Chromium based browsers like this one have the options for tab groups through extensions. Now, I believe Chromium based browsers actually have a Google version of tab groups, but this is an extension called tab groups and it works okay. Like it works, it just works okay. It works the way you should. And if I had never experienced the extension on Firefox, which is called simple tab groups, I would find this system perfectly fine. Like this was is an okay system. But the problem is, is that I have experienced simple tab groups on Firefox and that plugin on Firefox is far superior to the tab groups here in Brave, specifically because of the way they store the groups. So in Firefox, the simple tab groups extension, you have a little icon that appears in your toolbar that has a list of all your groups in it. And that's how you switch between groups. It means that your top bar, your tab bar is free for the, the group that you're displaying in brave or in Chromium based browsers, you have this thing up here. So if you were to open up one of these groups, you can see it just opens up all the tabs, all in the tab group in the tab bar and you have these just little bitty tabs. So in order to find the thing you're looking for, it's, you know, you gotta hover over these things and try to find the one you're looking for. It's not ideal. With the simple tab groups, the drop down for your groups is actually a list of the tabs you have open. I found in my brief time with Microsoft Edge that they do a fairly good job with tab groups because of the vertical tabs. You, they can do a better job of listing out the title of the tab so you don't have to kind of hover over each one to get the title. But Brave doesn't have that so you kind of have to deal with all those things crunched up. Now there's an obvious solution for that problem there is for me just to use fewer tabs. I know when it comes to tabs I'm a little weird. I am a tab hoarder. Uh, as you saw one of those tab groups was called ideas. That's where I put all my videos as ideas. I could like make a, a markdown file with all those in it and that'd be easier and take up less resources. But this is how I've chosen to do it. Maybe someday I will choose to do it a different way. But for now, I have a ton of tabs open and I need tab groups. And I don't like this particular implementation of tab groups. I like the version on Firefox way better. So those really are the two reasons why Brave is not for me. It, it, the customization is the biggest one by far. Like I could get used to this tab groups and I have gotten used to it. Like I use them, they're fine. But the customization is the big one. Like there doesn't seem to be a way to customize Brave outside of just adding a theme. And I want more than that. So the bottom line here is that for me personally, Brave is not an option. Just simply because the things that I had in Firefox are things that I miss too much. For most everyone else, Brave is a spectacular option. I think that if you are using something like Google Chrome or even Chromium itself or Microsoft Edge, I would highly suggest giving Brave a try. Whether you keep the crypto stuff on or turn it off is really up to you. And I like that you can turn it off. Which, so I would highly recommend everyone give Brave a try because for most people, you're not going to have my issues. Like you're not going to have my very niche need to customize my browser all the time because most people aren't like that. So the bottom line there is that Brave is a really good browser for pretty much everyone. It's just not for me. So in the comment section below, I'd like to hear your thoughts on Brave Browser. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all of these fine people. I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons from Patreon and YouTube. So thank you guys so very, very much. I, I really do need to come up with some words that could properly express my appreciation for all everyone who supports me on Patreon and YouTube, but for now, thank you will have to suffice. So thanks everybody for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.